Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 2 of our Sudoku series on Scratch 3. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just finished coding. Now I have to interject right here that if you've not watched part 1, please watch it before you come here because as you can see, I'm picking up from where I left off and for this video to make sense, you need to watch the previous one. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the video and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched part 1, in which case I'm going to start off by creating three new variables within our initialize function. And um, the first variable is going to be called current clone. And this uh, variable is actually just set it for now and I'll explain what it does after I've set all of them up. Um, the next one we need to set up is going to be called can start and that's going to be a boolean variable so I'll leave a question mark. And the third one is once again going to be a boolean variable and uh, I'll leave a question mark for that as well and it's called is square selected. And you can hide all these three variables because we don't really need to show them um, to our, our user and uh, you can set um, you can set is square selected to no initially. You can set can start to be no. And you can also set um, current clone to be null, okay? And uh, the reason I'm doing, uh, I'm saying null is because it has to be a number and none of the numbers are selected initially. Either way, Scratch treats it as a string, so it really doesn't matter. So anyway, once you're done with that, you can uh, set can start to be no as well. And there we go, that's all we need when we um, define initialize. And now you can head over to your square and grab a when sprite is clicked. So uh, when, when the sprite is clicked and uh, we'll go through this only if can start is equal to yes. So it's gonna be a kind of um, trigger. So when it's set to yes, whenever you know we set it yes in some of the sprites, when all of the sprites are ready, then we can, um, then we can actually access this um, uh, access all of this code by clicking on the square. So when this uh, sprite is clicked, you can say um, if can start is equal to yes, um, then what we will do is to switch, uh, is not switch, is set um, uh, is square selected uh, um, to yes, because now a square has been clicked on. And after we do this, we can also set current clone um, to be the clone number. And um, what this is going to do is make sure that current clone has the clone ID of that particular clone. And uh, we'll also be having a visual effect when the clone is clicked and we will switch costume to not touched, but um, not touched. So um, let's, uh, let's actually test this out. Oh, never mind. So um, can start is going to be set to no initially. So we'll first um, upload a sprite and uh, the sprite I've saved it as a dot. Um, I'm not sure dot what, but it's a sprite which you can download from the um, from the files that are linked in the description. So you can click on sprites and um, then the sprite that we need is going to be called pen numbers. So you can click on import and that should pop up right here. So what I'm going to do initially, so when I receive um, delete clones or del clones, I will delete all of these clones and um, uh, when I receive in it, I'm not really going to get into that as of now. But what I'm going to do is just say when I receive um, start, so when I receive a start, I will be setting can start to be yes. So that is all I need as of now. I'll be getting into what to do next after some time, but um, just leave it as it is. So now let's click on the green flag. And then now let's try clicking on a square. So I'm gonna click here and you can see that nothing really shows up. And I expected the costume to change. So I will go through my code once and then I'll be right back. Alright, I just went through my code and the error turned out to be that I was switching the costume to not touched instead of touched, which was kind of um, um, not to the point. I mean, I, I would need to um, have the um, square turn to green, so I do have to change the costume to touched. So uh, after you're done with that, you can click on the green flag and then when you click on a square, you can see that it turns into green. And you can see that uh, all the squares turn into green when we touch them. And that is not what I really want. So when I click on a particular square, I want to make sure that that square turns green and all the other squares remain um, white. And uh, that's what I'll be doing right now. So um, you can get into your code and uh, uh, before you actually switch costume, uh, you can just broadcast a message right here called um, check clone costume and wait. So create a new message, check clone costume, okay? And what this is going to do is 
um, go through our clones and see if that particular clone has a different costume. So, okay, I did that. I'm not entirely sure where I did that. I think I did it in the square. Yep, anyway, so we have the um, check clone costume right here. So when we receive check clone costume, all we have to do is check if um, our costume is, but actually we don't even have to do that. We can just set costume or um, switch costume to be um, switch costume to be not touched. And that is going to be all we need to do. Um, I initially wanted to have in an if then, and then say if the costume um, number or name was whatever, but this is just way faster. So let's click the green flag once again. And uh, this time I'm gonna click here. And then when I click here, you can see that boom, um, the square turns white and we only have the current square actually turning green. And that's pretty great because now we can use this to actually enter in some numbers. So now let's go to the pen numbers sprite and um, let's actually get into coding this part of it. And uh, I'm going to start this by um, or when I receive init and just like the square, I'm going to make sure that the first um, sprite or the sprite itself is hidden and we're just showing the clones of it. So add in a hide right there. And uh, when I receive start, we set can start to yes. Um, but after that, we do many more things. So um, I'll be making a new variable called key, okay? And this is where we're gonna detect which key is being pressed. And there are two ways you can do this. The first one is you can have a forever loop and you can check if key one is pressed, then if key two is pressed, if, three, uh, if key three is pressed and so on. And that's pretty inefficient. So what you can do instead is just have a forever loop like this. And um, before you have that, you can say set key to um, zero. So set key to zero. And uh, you can just say change key by one right inside of this. So change, uh, or actually just set key to one and you can remove that. And uh, what you can do here is have an if then and say if, um, head over to now sensing, if key, key is pressed. And you can put in the variable in uh, where that space was and Scratch actually lets you do this. So that's a pretty neat feature that you can actually use. So if key is pressed, and um, now it's important to make sure that the key is always between one and um, one and nine. So um, you can head over right after this and create a block. And I'm gonna call this block quick check, okay, whatever. So just call it quick check or something. And uh, you make it run without screen refresh. And what you can do here is uh, define quick check. You can call the quick check after the key is pressed. And uh, we'll just be having an if else, okay, so if, the key is um, equal to nine. So if the key is nine, then what we'll do is set the key back to one. Um, so if key is nine, set key to one. And if key is not nine, then we just change key by one. So um, set key to one. And otherwise we just change key by one. So pretty simple code. I mean, all we're basically saying is if we're at the end of it and um, we are key number nine, then we can just head right back to one and this loop is gonna go incredibly fast. So it's gonna make sure that it's always detecting when the player presses something. So when this key is pressed, so first what I'll be doing is um, broadcasting a message and waiting. So I'll be calling this message um, get um, square position. So get, um, get square position and I think that's gonna be a fairly precise message. So you can click okay. And uh, after this, you can set number to be clone, okay? And um, uh, uh, I know I haven't um, had that variable created yet. So you can create a new variable called number. And I think I said set number to be clone or something. I meant set number to key, okay? So set number to key, and um, uh, then we create a clone of ourself. So create clone of myself. And what this get square position is gonna do is go to the square and get that particular position. But it's also gonna do one other thing, and it, it, that one is to make sure that the particular clone, um, where it's on that particular square where we want to uh, add this clone, is going to be deleted. So what you can do is grab a when I receive get square position. Um, what we can do is if, um, if clone number, um, and I know I haven't set that up yet, but you can do it right now. So clone number, or clone square, you can call it anything. I'm gonna call it clone um, square. Yeah, let's go ahead with that. So clone square. So if clone square is equal to that particular, um, not particular, if clone square is equal to current clone, and I'm a bit slow, so I will just catch up quickly. Um, let's put clone square there and um, current clone right there. All right, there we go. Then what we can do is just delete this clone. So delete this clone. 
and uh, now we need to go into the square sprite and get the square position. So let's click on the square and uh, what we can do here is grab a when I receive, um, when I receive, um, where is that? When I receive a get square position, um, then what we can do is have a simple if then check. So if um, current clone is equal to the clone number, which means that the clone number is what is currently, the square which has the clone number is currently, you know, clicked. Um, if current clone, or let's just say if clone square is equal to current number, um, then what we can do is, um, and did I actually do it that way? Okay, I said clone number. Okay, I think I said uh, clone square as, a, I think I said it as um, instead of a private variable, I think I said it for all sprites. So I will change that quickly right here. So is clone square, I'll delete clone square and let me set it for the sprite only. So clone square, there we go. You can click okay and you can put that variable right um, there. So all right, there we go. So now I'm gonna uh, head back to the square and I'm gonna check. So if um, our clone number is equal to current clone, then we'll need two new variables. So x pause is going to be one and y pause is going to be another. And these two are going to be the particular positions of that clone. So we can just say set x pause to um, whatever and set y pause to whatever. So I will do that first, set x pause to and set y pause to. And in this case, all we have to do is get our x and y positions from the motion category. So you can say set x pause to x position and set y pause to y position. And when we head back to the pen numbers uh, sprite, we can grab a when I start as a clone. First, we will need to set the clone number to be um, number. So set uh, not clone number, actually in this case, it's going to be clone square. So I just get confused between those two. But anyway, set clone number to be number. And then we will uh, go to x position, y position. So grab a go to uh, x position, comma y position. And here it's also important to set the costume to be the correct costume because if you head over to the costumes tab, you can see that we have nine different costumes and each of the numbers. And we can just say um, switch costume to um, number. Okay, that's gonna be really, really simple. So switch costume to number. And uh, once you're done with that, I'm going to change the size of this because this is too big and I think it's done by default for you, but make sure you set it to 33, okay? So once you're done with that, you can just show your particular clone. And I think this is gonna be all we need to do. And uh, I'm gonna test this out. So I'm gonna click uh, the green flag and then I'm going to click on this particular one and then enter in a number. So I just entered in one and for some reason it switched the costume to nine. So I'm not entirely sure what went on here. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna check my code once and then I will be right back. So I found the error relatively quickly and it was just the fact that I said can start to be key instead of number to be key. And once you do that, you can just click the green flag once again. And when you click on something and enter in the number, it should be entered in perfectly. And what you can do is also try overwriting on that particular square. And you can see that we have the thing um, on top of each other instead of, um, instead of deleting that number first. And I thought that this would fix it. Uh, but as it turns out, we need to modify this a little bit. So the mistake here was just the fact that instead of setting the clone number, uh, clone square to be um, current clone, I set it to number with, and number is really the key that's been pressed. So that's obviously not what we want to um, set our clone square to. So you can just set it to be current clone instead. And now when you try overwriting something, it should work perfectly fine. So I'll enter in a one here and then two, and you can see that we change our costumes perfectly. And I'm gonna end this video right here. In the next video, we'll get into the um, more fun aspects of the game, if you wanna think about it, where we add in some layouts, the surrounding area, and also do a lot of other things. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.